today I'm going to be sharing what ended up being one of my favorite smart art boxes, which I so did not expect. I'll be demonstrating the Peebo oil marker set and answering some frequently asked questions about smart art box. This week, I am finally getting caught up on my Smart Art Box project. Every day for the next four days, I will have a new video uploaded, and that is finally going to get me caught up with all of my boxes. Those of you who've been around for a while know, with after all of the surgeries and health problems I had last year, I got really behind on pretty much everything. It really feels good to finally be caught up. But first, I want to answer a few frequently asked questions. I've been getting some really weird just straight out lies actually for some of the comments about these boxes on my channel lately. If you are not interested in any of this information and want to just jump straight into the project, which I don't blame you, just click over to this section of the video and we will get started. Smart Art Box is a monthly subscription box where every month they send you a new box full of full-size art supplies, everything you need to complete a project. You have two options for buying from this company. One, you can order something as a gift. If you're going to get a one-time box, they are only going to ship it to you once, they charge you for it once. That runs $55. And it says right on their website that this is a one-time box. The other option, which is really the point of a subscription box, is to have a new box sent to you monthly. You also have some options where you can save a little bit more if you pay for more months all at once versus being billed once a month. But if you're billed once a month, it's $50 per month. When you go to their website, it is very clear if you are signing up for a monthly subscription box, it will tell you you are going to be billed monthly. This is not a one-time purchase. Or you can, of course, choose the gift option, which will allow you to purchase one box. That way, if you want to try it, see if you even like like the box, you've got that. When you get a subscription box, whether it be an art box, a makeup subscription box, or loot crate, I mean, there's a lot of different subscription box out there for different subjects or different genres. I don't know what word I'm looking for there. But when you get one of those boxes, some months they're going to be really, really fun and you're going to think everything in the box is amazing and you love it. And some months have pastels. If, if you guys are unaware, I don't like pastels. They feel icky on my hands and it freaks me out. So those boxes are not so much fun for me. But the point is you're going to get something different every single month. It's not something that you're going to go into if you're like, I'm interested in colored pencil and ink tents and acrylic paintings. You're not going to buy this box because you're expecting to get those items. If those are the items you want, go to the store and buy those items. The point of a box like this is that you're going to try something completely new that you probably wouldn't have thought of. You're going to like some months. You're not really going to like others as much. But that's going to depend on the person. What one person thinks it's a terrible box, another person may think it's the best box ever. That's the nature of a subscription box. Next, I've been getting people commenting on my videos telling me that because I'm sponsored that I'm lying about these boxes and it's not true and it's just because I'm being paid. A couple things here. First, I have not charged Smart Art Box in the last year because I haven't had my videos out on time. Those are... I, I don't feel right charging them, but I love making the videos and I love the boxes. So I still do them even though I'm not getting paid. They do provide me with the boxes. The other thing that you should know about me is you cannot pay me enough to promote something that I don't like. I am offered almost daily by companies to post things on Facebook or on my YouTube channel to review their product and they'll pay me and some of them they'll pay good amounts. I mean, I have one company right now who's contacted me a few times in the last week. They want me to post about a product that I don't personally stand behind. It's a, an art product. They want me to post on my Facebook page. They're offering $200 for a post that would take me, what, 10 minutes to post about the product, it wouldn't even take me any time. That is an easy $200. I'm not going to do it because I don't stand behind that product. I don't like the product. I'm not going to promote for any amount of money something that I don't like. It's just not something that I do. And those of you who are familiar with my channel know this. I don't promote that many companies or that many products. I only really work with companies and work with brands where it's something that I personally would use, that I like. Most of the stuff I use, like you guys know, I'm sponsored by Fredericks. That was a can the only canvas I used already, so it was a fit. I don't promote things that I don't like, mostly because I like being able to sleep and I have to live with myself after I make these videos. And I'm not going to lie, just to get attention, views, or even get paid. It's not worth it to me. That's not who I am or what I do. Another comment that I've been getting a lot that is just not true is that I don't get the same thing in my box, that I get better things than what you get because I'm sponsored and you guys who are paying are not getting the same thing. That is just not true. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've been behind on my boxes like by months. I think I, I was four months behind this time, or I guess three months because this video is going up on time, but I've been really behind. So what you're seeing me do are projects that were from the month before, or two months, three months before. It's not that I got different stuff. It's that I'm not always working on the same month as what the current month that video goes live on. Although that should be changing because after this week, I'm caught up. Like, I'm going to keep saying that. I'm so excited to be caught up on something. And a lot of people are trying to claim that the, the com company is dishonest because they're not sending us the same thing. 
not it's just not true and that brings me to the next comment that i've been getting that the owners are scammers that this box is a rip off because it's too expensive here's the thing i've actually met the owners of this company who put this together it's brenda and reed they he runs mostly the business side whereas brenda puts together these projects now what were your goals when you decided i'm gonna make a smart art box? like this is that's a big business to get into right. what what made you decide to do this i mean i've been an artist all my life and have always kind of circled back to you know doing artwork and we were traveling for a while and we ran into some really interesting mediums, you know, people working with sand and saffron oil is the saffron biggest oil, thing that, that really... Right. They were painting with saffron oil and then burned the back and everything got illuminated. Into life, you know, so we're like seeing all these amazing things and just pottery and the different cultures and what they work with and we were thinking, we don't see this in the States, you know, we want to show people something different and um, also as an artist, I know that you tend to stick to one medium all the time and you don't, you know, venture out and you don't know what to buy when you go to the store, you know, what should you really, you know, get to manipulate the medium, you need the right brush, you know, and so we wanted to have, put that experience in a box, you know, and make it easy for people to just try something different and that's really our main goal, you know, we, we want to give an opportunity to try something that you have never heard before or just to get out of your usual routine and have a break you know, it's like you, like you work with the color, color princess a lot and it's really nice to just not have to focus on I have to make this perfect, you know? That's my I love idea. that. Yeah, I love the looseness of a lot of these yeah. styles. Just play around and experience. This is not some big corporate company that is out to just make a buck and screw people over. They want to provide a product or a service that lets people try out different art mediums, try out different styles, try out things they would not have otherwise tried out. This has nothing to, they, they are the nicest people. Like I can't imagine somebody calling these people scammers or frauds. They are some of the nicest and most kind people I have ever met. They work with a charity called Artists for Trauma. They help people who have had life altering just disabilities and trauma in their life with art and it's just such an amazing foundation i'm going to from here on out now that i'm finally caught up with my art boxes and i i can charge them my it's not a big fee but i'm going to donate a hundred dollars which is what i'd make for these videos that is now from here on out we'll always go to this foundation because it's a foundation that i want to support anyway i could just say hey don't worry about it i don't need to start being paid again now that i am finally on time with the videos or i could take that money and put it back into charity so Yay, and if you guys wanna get involved with that charity, it is amazing. It's something that I would just love for more people to be involved in. I'm gonna put a link directly to that charity in the video description, so if that is something you're interested in looking into, please do. I'm sure I'll talk about them more in the future because I do want to share what is being done to help others. It's just such an awesome cause. So there you go. I'm still not being paid to make these boxes. I just really like them. And calling them scammers is just beyond me. So here's a little story. Last year, I actually was scammed. This is a real scam. There were some earbuds that you could buy, wireless earbuds, that I thought these would be awesome for painting where I'm not getting caught up, the cord's not being caught on my easel every time I bend over. That's really aggravating. So I thought these would be really cool. It was a pre-order, $200 per set. And now that's expensive, and especially for earbuds, but I th they just seemed so perfect for my needs. So my husband and I decided we would both get a pair, we'd pre-order the pair, and that would be our Christmas present to each other that year. Cause I mean, $200 is a bit pricey. So we spent $400 total. We pre-ordered them. The company promised if it took too long for them to get them out because they were still in production, that they would refund your money, no problem. They were very active on their Facebook page, like super active on their Facebook page. They kept having giveaways and people would win t-shirts and their hats and then the people who won would post that. So it's very active. They, they didn't just take your money and run, or at least that's the impression you were given. They would show photos of the production facility. They showed photos of the, the, P prototype. Well, I couldn't think of the word there, but they would show photos of all of that. Well, it turned out they waited until after it had been so long that nobody could, like with most people, when you contacted your credit card, depending on when you pre-ordered, the banks wouldn't refund the money. They, it was a scam. They were never in production. They were never, they made a prototype just so that they could take pictures of it. They never intended on selling them. And as it turned out, the CEO, CEO of that company was actually a scammer. He, this is a known scam that he did. And he ran off with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, like an insane amount of money, or at least according to how much their website claimed they had, had sold. So many of us were out money and unfortunately my husband and I bought two sets. So we were out $400. We were given nothing. Now that my friends is a scam. I'm still pretty unhappy about that. Every time I think about it, it was a year ago, about a year ago. I'm still so angry. 
but that is a scam. Something not being in your budget is not a scam. It just means that thing is or service is not in your budget. And that's fine. Everybody is going to have different needs, different budgets. I own a Kia Soul because that's in my budget. That doesn't mean that I think BMWs or Escalades are scams. That's just, that fits somebody else's needs, somebody else's budget. There are subscription boxes out there for every budget. There are some that are gonna cost half as much. They're going to have different types of products in them. The thing that I like about this box is that they aren't just dumping you with a bunch of supplies and you've gotta figure out what to do with them. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but for me, if it's something new, something I've never done before, something I know nothing about, which is most of the boxes in my case, I love have, being able to be walked through step by step how to do that. They come with these brochures that go over project pointers. They go over a history of whatever the subject or the style that you're studying that, that month is. They talk about what is, what is in the box, what the actual supplies are, how best to use those supplies. They give you tips on using those supplies, like how to hold it. How to, I mean, it's so much information goes into these brochures. And then on the back, you always get step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete your project. So like I said, if it's something you've never used before, you're not gonna feel lost. You're actually going to learn how to use that medium. So for me, that's just a better fit for me than a box that may be cheaper, but doesn't come with lesson. I like the art lesson. So another thing that people are commenting on is that the cost of the supplies in the box are not worth what you're paying for the box. So if you're, let's say you're not getting any of the discounts and you're just doing the one a month box, it's $50. Or if you bought a one-time box, that's 55. But depending on how much you paid there, this month's box, each individual item, if you bought them on Amazon at the time of making this video, it came to $35.49. Okay, yeah, that's less than $50. You're not just paying for the supplies. If you just want supplies, go buy the supplies individually. You're paying for an art lesson. You're paying for a service where they send the products to you. The shipping, the box, I mean, it's free shipping, but they've got to pay shipping. The cost of the box and the packing, the cost of storing all of these boxes before they're shipped out. They've got to have a warehouse for that. You've got the cost of, the, like I said, the brochure, and those brochures are expensive. I know some other subscription box had to cancel making this brochure because it gets too expensive. There are quite a few who have canceled that side of it. Those are still included. That's a, a value to me. That's a value. It may not be a value to you. That's okay. But I like that. There's so much that goes into running a business like that. So many other costs. It's not just the cost of the supplies, but not even mentioning the amount of work that it takes to box all of these products, to make the brochure, to make the lesson. Brenda makes the lessons herself. She researches this. She does such a good job of doing all of this. And that takes a lot of time. You're not just paying for the cost of the supplies. You're paying for the entire package, the entire service. Something that a lot of you may just not realize, do you go to restaurants? You know they're not just charging you for the cost of the ingredients, right? You're paying for the cook to research the, the recipe or invent the recipe, either way. You're paying for the years that he had to go to college to learn how to even do this or maybe he didn't go to college, maybe someone else just trained him, but you're paying for all of that. You're paying for the waiter to bring you the food. You're paying for the waiter to refill your drinks. Drinks, by the way, are also way cheaper if you just go to the grocery store and buy them individually. When you go to a restaurant, you're paying for the whole package. You're paying for a service, not just the ingredients in your meal. Some restaurants are way more expensive than others. Does that mean they're a ripoff? No. Everybody has different needs, different wants, different budgets. A restaurant that may seem too expensive for one person may be another person's absolute favorite, favorite restaurant. We've got options, we've got choices, or you can just choose to cook the food on, you know, go to the rest, the grocery store, buy the supplies and cook it on your own. That's an option too. We've got tons of options. That does not mean that the restaurant is a scam because they charged you more than the ingredients of the food that they cooked. For those of you who are like, why are you bringing this up? Why are you even talking about this? Because it makes me really sad to basically watch Watch good people be bullied so that other people can have fun and get attention or whatever it is that the people who are leaving these comments on my video, whatever you're trying to accomplish, it really makes me mad. It just reminds me of schoolyard bullies. You're taking good people who have a good product, something that I 100% stand behind. I love their boxes. I freaking hate drama. I was tempted not to even address any of these things, but I hate to see my friends being bullied like this. I hate to see good people having accusations and just straight out lies thrown at them. And honestly, I'm just a bit passionate about somebody being treated badly so that somebody else can be entertained. That's not honest and it just sucks. So moving on to this box, when I opened this box, I'm not gonna lie, I was not excited about it because Markers and me, we don't typically get along that well. We don't we don't have a real close relationship other than, I do like the Windsor Newton pigment markers, but that's because of how they blend. So with these, I was just like, 
Paint markers, yay. I was not not super excited. And you guys know when I've done videos in the past, I've told you when I wasn't in love with a box um, and what I liked or disliked about them. But this box, I was just kind of like, uh, I didn't even want to do the project, honestly. I got my other projects, the other um, ones that you'll see this week. I did those ones first. And I was just thinking, I don't even know what I'm going to do with this box. I don't like cubism. I don't like markers. How am I even going to make this like interesting enough for you guys to even bother watching? So first, I watched my friend Lindsay made a video and I will have a card pop up here you can check that out now she did hers in cubism and she wasn't in love with the markers herself and well she doesn't like cubism she's like me neither one of us are huge fans of cubism so she did her, her box but I was really impressed with how they blended that was the thing that intrigued me on this one watching her blend it reminded me of working in oils and I love oil paint where you would blend a wet layer over a dry layer and just kind of smudge that out into the dry area it looked so much like that and it got me thinking well if it can do that maybe I'll just do a style that I would normally do something kind of surreal or in this case I decided to go with a cartoony octopus and some tree chickens wearing top hats because everything is more fancy in a top hat I don't own a top hat where do you even buy those I need one but I took it as a bit of a personal challenge like can I do this I mean I know I'm, I'm I'm able to work well with other mediums and manipulate them into doing what I want can I do that with this is it even possible so now it was like just personal challenge can I make something really cool after I finished my project, I had so much fun with the first one. I used just what came in the box for that one that I pulled up some of my, I had some clearance canvases, canvas boards from Michaels that are just, I've had them laying around forever. So I grabbed those. I'm like, let's go ahead and test these. I drew a landscape and then a flamingo on those. So those two didn't come in the box. I do wish that this box had more canvases because these markers go a long way. You can do more than one project with these and I was a little bit worried about that actually. I was afraid I was gonna run out as I was working on this. I didn't even come close. Even with all three projects, I did not come close to running out. So this one would have been cool if there were a couple of extra canvas boards in that. Now, now that I know that it can get that much coverage, I would have liked that. But I had so much fun with these. I actually went and did some research. I found out that these markers are light fast and all the ones in this box are completely light fast. They use the ASTM scale and then they have other colors available in their range that all but two are light fast. And the sec the two that are not light fast are kind of mid range. They're not terrible, but they're not as good as the full light fast ones of the, the rest, like what we're in this set. They come in different nibs that you can buy if you are interested in them. And it's funny because I never would have thought to try those markers if it wasn't for this box. And that's the point of these boxes. Is try something new, find out if you like it. I was determined I was going to hate these. When I opened it, it was just like, Ugh, no, not markers. I loved them so much that I'm honestly considering buying some on my own. I'm not sure if I will. I'm going back and forth on that because I already work in so many mediums. Like, do I really need to pick up another one? But they were cool. They were fun. I really like them for landscapes. The colors in this box, you've got to watch a little bit because they get muted really quickly, very easily. It's a little bit harder to keep the colors bold and vibrant. Like when I wanted to mix purple and I mixed my red and the blue together, I got more of a gray, kind of dusky gray violet color. Very pretty, but it's also not, you know, you're not going to get a bright, bright purple. If you want a bright purple, you would need to buy a marker that is that. These are really opaque colors. They do make some transparent ones, but the ones in this box were all opaque. So mostly you're going to get very muted colors. They're not, unless you're just using straight red, blue, or yellow. If you're mixing any of these colors together, you're going to get more muted colors. I was able to get a bright green when I mixed the yellow and the blue, but the blue and the red together, like I said, very, very muted. It's really easy to get browns, creams. You see, you'll see that if you watch Lindsay's video, she got a nice skin tone for her, her portrait that she did in the cubism. It's very easy to tone these down and mix. So when you're doing yours, just be aware of that. Be careful when you mix your colors. If you're trying to make them super bright, that, that can be a little hard to do. But the bonus of these is that they're so opaque that if you mess up, so forgiving. You can go right over it and it stands out and you'll see that in my octopus. Actually, let's just go ahead and jump into this. I'll go into the box, uh, box opening. We'll look at what came in this month's book. That didn't come out right. We'll look at what came in this month's box and then jump into the projects and I'll explain to you what I did. And there we go. So opening up this month's box, the first thing that we've got is, of course, the tissue paper. It's always wrapped up nicely. I feel like I'm opening a birthday present or something every time I open one of these boxes. I actually don't look up what comes in the box before I open it, just so I can be surprised. So we have the brochure. Then we have our artist oil marker set. There are five full-size markers in here. One of the things that I really like is that you don't just get little sample markers. These are big, full-sized markers here. And there are five of them, white, black, red, yellow and blue and those are all opaque 
We've got a bottle of Gamsol. This is my favorite odorless mineral spirits. I actually use Mona Lisa odorless mineral spirits more, but the Gamsol is better because it's less toxic. It just costs a lot more. And then we had the paintbrush. That is the Da Vinci Plain Air Bristle Flat Brush, a number four, and my canvas board. So getting started on the project, the first thing that I did is just take a regular graphite pencil and I sketched out my octopus and the little sky chickens or tree chickens, whatever I happen to be calling on that day. But it's with regular graphite. Now here's the thing. If you smudge your canvas as badly as I did, and you can see smudges all over, I made an absolute mess with the graphite because I kept redrawing things and then erasing and redrawing. It doesn't matter. These markers are all completely opaque. It, no matter what goes on, I mean, there are parts you'll see later on where I use used the red marker on top of black and it was just as red as if it was on top of white. Like it's really opaque. So the first thing that you want to do with the markers is shake them up really well and then you're just going to press the nib onto, I used the, the top of my smart art box. I just kept pressing on top of it over and over again until the ink or paint or I don't even know what you would call this started to flow through. So I'm going around the edges first, and I wasn't too sure. I was a little bit afraid that I was going to have a, a harsh line. Usually when I'm colored with markers, whenever I layer like this, I can always see my start and stop points, except with the Winsor Newton pigment markers. That's one of the things I like so much about those. So I wasn't sure with these, but luckily these do sort of reactivate. Now they do stay wet for a while. They are anywhere, I'd say between two to 10 minutes before they'll dry completely, depending on how thick you get it on there. But look how nicely this covers. I mean, it is really opaque. If you don't thin things out with the odorless mineral spirits, it's really, really glossy. But if you end up thinning the paint and blending a lot with OMS, it will make the, the pigment look pretty dull. So after I got all of that on there, this is still, the blue is starting to dry, but the, the black was still pretty wet. So I've dipped this brush into the odorless mineral spirits, and now I'm, uh, every time I actually dip it into the odorless mineral spirits, I'm just using a disposable plate for this, or bowl. I'm dabbing it onto a paper towel and then just slowly going around in between the blue and the black. I just wanted it to have a nice fade from one to the next. And it faded so nicely. Now, even when this is dry, they still will reactivate a bit when you add odorless mineral spirits to them. Not not to the point like the Winsor Newton pigment markers would where those will lift completely off, especially if you're using the Upo paper, but they do kind of, you'll be able to blend them still, even if they're dry. So I just keep adding a little bit more odorless mineral spirits and moving that along. You don't want too much on the brush. You don't want to create a whole puddle like a watercolor look here. You just want enough so that you can blend and push that black paint into, or marker, ink, pigment, whatever, into the blue here. So I'm just going to smudge that over. And this is how you can blend every, I mean, throughout the whole thing, this is what I'm doing to blend. And look how nice and soft that is. So they aren't like other paint markers that I've used before. I've used some, I used to teach classes out of Michael's and I got, I had the opportunity to test out a lot of different markers and no, I, none of them were really a fit for me. I, there, I just was never a real fan. But these ones, being that they blend, so it's almost more like an oil paint. It's like somewhere between a marker and oil painting. It, it was just really interesting. And I felt there were so many possibilities. And for this project, I wanted to just use what came in the box. So I'm not using any additional brushes or anything like that. But on my other ones that you'll see the two other paintings that I'm going to do, I did use different brushes just to test them out to see how they worked. So here I'm mixing, I basically make it a glaze with black. I've mixed some of the black marker. I put some onto the, the a separate paper plate. Or it's a paper plate, but it's got that like waxy finish on it so that the marker doesn't just soak right in. But I am any of those like plasticky disposable ones, or if you've got a palette at home, you can use a normal palette. Anything you want there really would work if you wanted to blend the way that I'm doing here. But I'm, I am thinning it out with paint thinner and then just glazing. So I'm, I'm creating a fairly translucent look. Now the glaze Glazes. While I did do quite a few glazes on this, it was a little funny to do because the paints are, they're more opaque than you would typically want for a glaze. But with the black especially, you can see, look how nicely I'm able to tone this down because that blue was way more vibrant than I wanted. I didn't want it to be that bold. I didn't, I felt that if it was too bright that the birds and the octopus would just get lost into in that background.
Now this whole section, because I glazed so much with odorless mineral spirits, it dried completely matte. There's no gloss to that section. Anywhere where I applied a markers, the markers directly to the canvas and didn't really blend them out much or add much odorless mineral spirits, this stuff is super, super glossy. They do make a varnish. So I was going, I thought I would just use my Gambar, an oil based, var, like what I would normally use for oil varnishes. But I looked up, I'm so glad I did first. I went and looked on their website and they have a specific product just for varnishing this stuff because I guess if you use a normal oil varnish it reactivates because these markers do reactivate so you could get smudging and, and some problems that way so I'm really glad that I waited but I'm sure with those products when you put a, a gloss varnish over it should even out the gloss once you do that A spray varnish would probably be okay, even if it was an oil spray. I would think it would be okay. I just wouldn't want to brush one on because that would really create kind of a mess. So right now I want to create a brownish tone for the wood base that he's sitting on, or wood floor, I guess. So I'm mixing red. I've got some yellow in there and a bit of black. And it's so, you can get so many different tones of browns or tan colors. That was one of the easiest colors to mix. Anything very, very neutral. Getting like bright purple wasn't, that didn't work with this, this color set. I mean, I, I was able to get lavender, but not really like bright, like the purple of the box. That, it was going to be much more muted than that. So here I'm just using the paintbrush to paint this on, and I've got a lot of paint thinner on there. So it's going, it, it's making that paint go a pretty long ways but again it's going to be very very flat when it dries and for this one I didn't do a ton of planning so I'm just kind of experimenting as I go the nice thing is that worked out okay with this medium because when I changed my mind and wanted to go over it with another color it, it was no problem everything these markers being as opaque as they were were really nice. I'm curious though to try the the translucent markers. That's I mentioned earlier. I'm I'm going back and forth on if I want to buy more of these markers because I already have so many mediums I work in. I don't know if I will really want to to get another marker to use because I already like the Windsor and Newton pigment. But if I do, I re end up getting some of these markers or more of them. I really want to try the translucent ones too because the way that these glaze already with markers this opaque, that would be interesting to see. So see how I'm ta just taking that white marker and I'm pushing it on the, the plate there so that I can just mix some of that white in. So you're, I'm mixing paint basically. It was a really easy way to paint without making much mess. Like I didn't have to get a whole palette out. I mean, I'm using paper plates, but I didn't have to have my big palette out. I didn't have to have a million brushes. It was nice because I was able to do a whole lot with you know, a limited, just the single brush. You could do just about everything with. Now remember with your paint brushes, the harder you push, the thicker your line is going to be. If you wanna get really fine, thin lines, just barely let the tip of the bristles touch the canvas and that is going to give you a much thinner line than if you were pushing harder. Now this specific brush, it's a really rough brush, which is ideal for the type of blending that we're doing here. It's going to be harder to get thin lines. You would want a smaller brush for really, really thin lines. So I'm not gonna do a ton of detail here. And these these markers come this one is the i think these are the four millimeter nibs they also have two millimeter and 15 millimeter nibs so you can get really big ones or really little ones the little ones would be nice for getting some of that finer detail and not all of the sizes are available in all of the colors it looked like when i glanced over it, all the four millimeter the ones that i'm using here were available in all of the colors but some of the smaller nibs and the bigger ones they were more limited on what colors you could get them in there are 18 colors that this company makes with these markers. And as you can see, that's actually, it should be plenty considering how well they blend. So dripping some more of that black into the bowl there so I can get some shadows painted on. Now, I have a tendency to want to lean towards using the paintbrush more than anything else, just because it's what I'm more comfortable with. Markers and me, like I've mentioned before, we don't have a, a real long, good history besides now that I've been using the Windsor and Newton pigment markers, but even that I'm newer with. These ones, are with these, they're still very different. It's weird for me to use them, so I found myself reaching towards the paintbrush and trying to paint on so much more than just using the markers themselves. So add some of the blue there. Got some white. So 
So I've got this light blue color. I want to make it look like he's sitting on a puddle. So the tan that I put down first, I really didn't need to. I could have just left everything dark brown, but being that I didn't plan this out too well, I didn't know if I was go what color I was going to go with. I thought I would leave it like more translucent water, which would be more realistic, but it didn't necessarily look that much like water either. So I went with the cartoony look of just, let's make it really blue. So see how I can take just a few dots with that white marker and look how I can take the brush that has a little bit of paint thinner and just smudge that out. Just on those edges. So you get this really nice painted look. I just would not have expected this with markers. I used to have students bring these to class. I had actually one student, her mom, insisted that the daughter only sign her work with paint markers. When she, she would paint with oils or acrylics, but she only wanted the work signed in a paint marker because she thought it looked cleaner. I thought it looked terrible because it was obviously done with a marker, but she insisted on it. So I, I ne just never really liked the look, but these, being the way you can soften them out and make it look like a painting, really enjoying. And I wasn't sure how much, like I was afraid I was going to use too much and not have enough to finish the project because it just, you, the markers, you can't tell if they're starting to go dry. Well, I, apparently mine never did, even on all three projects, but I wasn't sure how long these markers would last. So I looked up on the company's website and they say, the company that makes the markers said that they will last for 156 meters on a canvas which would be about 600 or sorry 6,141 inches so I'm guessing they're saying straight line and that can't be square inches obviously which I don't love that they didn't just give me the square inches square inches make sense that tells me how much coverage I'm going to get on a canvas like I can I can do the math there and I'm not even good at math but when you give me like the 6,141 inches like I have no idea how many canvases that is going to cover I mean it sounds like a lot but I, I'm not sure not when you're talking about just a straight line. But none of these started to run dry. And I was using a lot, like kind of bleeding out a lot of these onto the pa the palette that I'm using, the little plate thing, or bowl thing. I, I went through a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot of that I drained out of the markers. And it's still, they always kept flowing smoothly. You do want to make sure the instructions, both the website and then if you look through the project pointers on, that came in the Smart Art Box, they tell you make sure to store these horizontally. So here I'm mixing the red and the blue, and you can see it's very muted. They're, they're so opaque, it's like you're mixing white in with it, so it's not super, super purple. But I think that's just the nature of these being as opaque as they are. Let's add a bit more red. It seemed a bit too blue. And I also found if you just push on the marker and hold it down, see how it will just start to run out without having to continuously push up and down. So we'll mix that in. One thing that was it was really nice with this one, it, with only using one paintbrush, is only having to clean one paintbrush. One of the things I hate with oil painting, it's one of very few things I hate about oil painting, but I end up having to clean so many brushes because I'm really frivolous, I guess, about which brush. Like, I'm, I just grab any brush, and I end up with 20 brushes out in one sitting. So it takes me forever to clean all my brushes. This was kind of nice just to use one, and it, it made it pretty easy for cleanup. Maybe I ought to use less brushes when I'm painting myself or my bigger paintings with actual oils. So adding a whole bunch more red in there. It was still too blue. I felt like it was matching the background blue too much. And when you shake these, Shake them with the cap on. I did that on accident a couple times where I wasn't paying attention. I took the cap off and thought, oh, I forgot to shake, shake this one. And it kind of splatters, which can be a good thing if you want that. I think you can see the big blue splatter. Um, there's a dot on my drop cloth there that I'm painting on. Make sure that you have the cap on all the way. And you want to make sure you're storing markers with the cap on all the way. If you're not used to working with markers, it's really easy to just kind of half put it on and you don't realize it didn't click close, then it can dry out if you do that. Make sure you put them on all the way. 
So I'm adding, I added that violet color I mixed and then the purple and white just, or I'm sorry, black and white right on top of it to get my highlights and shadows. Now I am making sure that in between adding black and in between adding white that I'm cleaning that brush off in the paint thinner because if I don't, I'm going to just end up with solid gray everywhere and I don't want that. So when I switched from white to black or black to white, I rinsed that brush off and you can see how messy, that's what you're seeing off to the left of the screen there. That is just my paint thinner sitting in the bowl there and it's, you can, work if you wanted to just straight out of the, the bottle that it comes in. I wanted to save it so I could use it for my colored pencils. So I didn't want to get my what was in the bottle dirty. So you can just rinse the bottle the brush out though if you want in that bottle of Gamsol. So now I'm going through, look how I've blended that red and just let it blend into that lavender color. It's just so easy to blend these markers. I'm so glad that I gave these a genuine try with this style. Like, I, I, if, if I would have done cubism, no matter what, I wouldn't have been happy just because I don't like that, that style. So for me, anything I did, I would have been unhappy with. But just trying a different style with it and really giving it a good go of trying to blend, trying to get detail, seeing how it could handle different things, just kind of putting it to the test, giving myself a really good idea of how this worked. I'm really, really glad that I did that because it was so much fun. It was something I so thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed. I actually was sitting at my workbench working on this. I normally work at my easel. So I was sitting flat on my back. I've thrown out in doing this project because I, I was having so much fun. I wasn't even paying attention to the fact that I should not have been sitting the way that I was. And yeah, that, that was unpleasant. Or I guess it's still unpleasant because I'm still de dealing with that. Lesson learned. Don't lose track of time when sitting at that workbench. But it really is fun. I mean, the way that I'm able to, like here, I can add the the details here and I can glaze over it. If I want to tone down these dots, I can just mix one of these colors with paint thinner and then glaze over them to tone them down later. So I found if you think of it as, like if I thought of them as markers, I don't think I would have that much fun. But if you think of working with them as I would with an oil, the way that I work with oil paint, the way that I blend with oil, when once I got my mind in that mindset, Oh my gosh, I had so much fun. I just keep going back and forth, adding more highlights. If I add too much, no big deal. I can paint right over it. See how, what I'll do is just wipe that brush off, add a little bit of paint thinner, and then I can smudge the edges. So like where I had that peach color, I can just smudge it out into the black. You just don't want too much paint thinner or you it, it starts to kind of run and bleed into each other, which that I don't want. So that's why I'm dabbing it onto, I'm using a Viva paper towel, which are very cloth-like. An old t-shirt would work really well too. Not one that you ever plan to wear again, like an old rag. That works really well. So I'm using that blue. Look how that stands out right over the black. I mean, that is like, bold. And I'm really glad that all the colors, as much as I'm, I would like to try the translucent ones too, I'm glad that this set had so many opaque colors because for me, being that I was doing so much experimentation, I was able to fix mistakes and things that I didn't like over and over again. And you couldn't even tell where I did that too. Just keep going through, adding more highlights, smudging them out with the other brush. So now I am going to work on the tree chickens, starting by just a base yellow, which is way too bright. Drew on their little top hats because they need to be fancy. Mix some orange and then blended that right into the yellow. And look how soft that is. Like it just blends. So I'm still, if you can't tell, I'm still like so excited with how well these blended. And I used a bit of paper towel where I went too crazy. I had too much paint thinner there. So just sopped some of that up with the paper towel. These areas where I added thicker black with the marker, they ended up super glossy. So it made it a bit hard to photograph because the, it was like really, really glossy compared to everywhere else. 
So that's one thing that I don't love. And that's just because I used so much paint thinner. But I'm pretty sure a varnish, once that was varnished, that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Adding some more bright red, really getting the tips of his little tentacles standing out. And right over the black, the red is just as bright as it would be if you put it on top of white. So I made a little bit of a wash here with that orange, toned down some of the white dots. few more highlights. Smudging those out again. Just so that they're not too harsh. I mean, he's cartoony, so I guess it's not a big deal if they're there, but if you have too much like bright white everywhere, it it's hard for the viewer to know where to focus their eye. Like it, it's too, it, it would be too much. And I've already got a lot with the sparkles on the water and then on his tentacles. So I don't want heavy harsh white lines there. softening out the black there that I have for this sh these shadows. I put a little bit of a black wash on there so there's some black in with the paint thinner where I'm adding these just little little bits of shadow here and there. And this area was a bit too harsh so I went over it with the paint thinner and it softened it right out. Like you could really see where I started and stopped a brush stroke or a, a marker stroke and it blended right out with the odorless mineral spirits. Then I just clean the brush out in that paint thinner and that is it for this one. You can see there how glossy some of those areas were from the, the markers being so, so shiny. And from what the, I was reading from the company, depending on what surface you work on, because you can use it on just about anything from wood to plastic to anything, um, it'll affect how shiny or glossy the end result is. So here, I'm using that violet color, just a gray, grayish violet color. I used the color I used on the octopus. This was just a second canvas. This one did not come in the kit. The kit. I'm also using different brushes on this one because now I've already done the project with just with what came in the box so let I just wanted to give these markers a, another chance with even more or a bigger variety of, of brushes plus I was having so much fun so I grabbed some little cheapy uh, they were like Clarence Michaels canvas boards I'm gonna go ahead and do a base there so I got just a base uh, for where like just an underpainting basically I used a lot of paint thinner on that gray color so I'm going to give the hint of trees. This will end up being a landscape. Hard to tell right now. And this, I think, was one of the most fun. This was so fast. It just took a few minutes for me to do this entire little painting, and I love how it came out. I had to wait a bit because the sky portion, that base there, you can see as this is blending, that is still really fairly wet so I had to wait for that to dry a bit more so I could get the white marker to show up because right now it was too wet so the white marker on top of that grayish color it was just mixing too much so I needed to let it set so it would get a bit more tacky so once it sat for a few minutes I can go ahead and sketch in I just wanted this very soft look in the sky I didn't want it to be one solid color but close Taking another stiff round brush. This one is very a very similar type to the one that came in the box. It's just a bit larger and round. See, like these marker, these strokes that I'm making here, this is what I expect for markers. Like that's that's what my mind says a marker does. But look how they blend. And it's just so easy to do. If you were going to do this on, let's say, a sketchbook or a regular paper, I would recommend gesso at first because you're not going to get the same results on a really porous surface. And I believe the company, I think that's what one of the things they were talking about was that sort of, or surfaces like that, that it will soak into and the colors aren't as rich. So using a, just gessoing the paper, if you are going to work in a sketchbook, that should work fine for you. some mountains in the background there. And I'm just going to soften those out. I don't want those ones to be nearly as dark as the ones up front because I want them to look like they're off in the distance. 
I want to make sure I get variation too in that tree line. So some trees need to be really tall, some short. Don't try to make them all match. Whenever you're doing anything with nature, with landscapes, anything like that, if it's too uniform, it looks too man-made. Like it doesn't look natural. It, look, it looks very, very fake. Not that this is the most realistic thing in the world, but it really doesn't look quite right if, if it's too manicured. Get variation in things. So I need to let that dry for a few minutes before I can go on to the next stage. So once that dried for a minute, I went ahead and came back and it was probably like two or three minutes I let it set. It's not completely dry and you can tell because look at how that yellow is just blending in. It's kind of settling into that black. I've got a bit too much paint thinner there. And I wanted these to be muted kind of olivey greens and muted oranges so it looked like a fall tree scene. I didn't want super, super bright colors. So I'm layering those and I'm right now, I wanted to see what would happen if I went ahead and let it soak into the black, but it was too much. So I ended up, I think, letting it set for a few more minutes and having to go back over it with white just to lighten those areas up. And I'm just doing little dots here for these trees. So that gave a really neat look, but you can easily blend those out too. Because that's still wet, they're still just kind of bleeding right into that black. So I softened that with the other brush. I just dabbed on top of it. And that doesn't look like much of anything. It doesn't stand out enough still. If I let it dry, these colors will be super bold. But they're, it was just too, I was being too impatient. That was a big drop, whoops. Let me just spread that out. I have no idea why I lifted that canvas at that point. So now I'm going back over with the white. So I figured if I could lighten these up a bit when I went on top with the leaf color, they'll stand out a lot more. Mostly, and again, if I was not being impatient, and I just let the, the black dry all the way, then I wouldn't need to add the white. But I wanted to lighten these up some, and it actually ended up working. But I would recommend just let it dry. Be patient, more patient than I was being. And again, see the variation? I don't want these to all look the same. Get some different heights in there. So I'm adding some black just to separate some of these clumps and clusters of the tree shape. Otherwise, I just look like I have a bunch of triangles. So I'm dabbing this orange color, this muted orange, right over the white. Now we're starting to get closer to the colors that I wanted. I had to be careful here because a couple of times when I tried blending the green, I got this super bright green color, which is not what I wanted. But I let a little bit of that orange mix into it, and that gave me a nice muted color. I could also add a, just a little bit of red on its own. Whenever you have a color that is too bright, if you add its complementary color, you will neutralize it. You'll tone it down. So let's say you had a bold, bold purple, and you wanted it to make it a little bit more neutral. Add a little bit of yellow to it or the other way around. You've got yellow that's too yellow. You want to neutralize that some, add purple. The same thing with orange and blue or green and red. Those will neutralize each other. And in this case, I mean, there's red in my orange, so that's why that is going to tone down that green for me too. This is a little bit different. This seems to mute anyway, just because the colors being what they are. I'm taking that black and dabbing that in there. Breaking up some of these clusters of the trees again. Otherwise, I was ending up with just this mass of like a lump of color. It didn't have the shape of trees where it shifted from ones that are smaller and farther away where there were shadows in between the tree leaves. There is that guy, and you can see that is super, super glossy, very shiny. The, you can see the areas where I added more paint thinner too, like around the, the, the fog as that's rolling through, where it's 
a little bit more flat there because I had so much paint thinner. So the next project that I wanted to do was this flamingo. And this is another one. You can see where I sketched that out. I made a mess of that canvas. It doesn't matter. It's going to complete, this stuff is so opaque, it will cover anything. So here too, I changed my mind. After I drew, started drawing out the flamingo, I thought, oh, what am I doing? I should do the background first. Now the white marker, because I was using it on top of black, see how it's picked up a lot of the black? I can use a little bit of paint thinner to clean that off. Or in this case, it didn't matter because I was going to make gray anyway. I just let it rub, rub off right onto the canvas. But I, I would, in this case of doing this again, if I were paying attention to what I was doing at that point, I would have done the background first and not outlined the flamingo because see how there, the, the red is mixing in with it a little bit. It's not going to be noticeable once I get the, the black in to create the gray. But if you were trying to create something really white, that could have been a problem. So don't do what I did, kids. Pay attention to what you're doing. I don't know why. Like I always do my background first to avoid stuff like that. I don't know what I was thinking. So here I'm using a brush. This one is very stiff. It is a round brush. This is just a really cheap generic brush I got at Michael's. They have the kit that has like a canvas and it holds the these brushes and a bunch of flat ones, flat and rounds. They're super cheap, but they really do work for a lot of things. I'm picky about most of the art supplies that I use, but I'm I'm generally like a lot of the different types of the like non-name brand or generic paint brushes. Uh, Michael's house brand and Hobby Lobby house brand. I like both of their brushes. Add a little bit of paint thinner so that that blended smoothly. But this is why I added the white first because I knew the black would go crazy on this. I, so it was just easier to add the white and then let it turn to gray being that gray was my end goal. I love flamingos up against gray backgrounds. Like cloudy gray skies, anything like that. The colors just look so nice together. Now this brush is not gonna get a super smooth look, especially considering how much paint thinner I have on here. So I'm going to end up using a mop brush to soften all of that out once I finish blending this. The one bonus of two of not having done the, the whole flamingo before I did the background, see how I can keep sticking my finger on the flamingo to hold my canvas still? If that had the pigment on it already, some of that would probably be getting fingerprints right now. So I'm going to get a bit of paint thinner on there and then dab that brush off onto my paper towel and then let that blend. I was getting too much black. So now we've got this nice gradient from the dark black up into the lighter gray, but I do, well, I guess I should say dark gray up into lighter gray, but this is still not super smooth. So that's where I'm taking that really soft mop brush and just lightly going over everything and look how nice and soft I can get this background. Getting rid of all those little brush strokes. I could see this medium being really nice for somebody who wanted to go out and paint, like go sit at a, park, at a park and paint, wanted to work with something that they could blend, something that's similar to oils without having to bring a bunch of oil paints with them. This would be very easy to put in a backpack and take with you. That container where I had the paint thinner has turned into mud at that point. That really should be wiped out and have fresh paint thinner put in there. Now, generally when I work with paint thinner, I do like to keep the lid on it because it doesn't, this one too, especially the, the gam, gam salt, it is odorless and you really don't, it doesn't smell like anything. Uh, you do, this one is good because it's one of the most non-toxic of all of them. So that is an added bonus, but I like to keep mine in a closed container. So in this case, if you guys don't have a container to put it in, keep it in the container that it comes in and just dip your paintbrush into that. It works totally fine. And that way you can keep the lid on when you're not working, but leaving it open like I'm doing here. If you have a cat, you're running the risk of the cat coming by and drinking it or walking through it or anything like that. And I don't know that it's really good to breathe that in for too long. These markers, by the way, have an extremely strong scent to them. Very, I mean, well, what, I guess what you would expect from a, a very strong marker. So if you're very, if you're really sensitive to odors, these are not going to be for you. 
it didn't smell bad. It smelled like marker paint, but um, kind of smelled good. I guess that's like people who think gasoline smells good, but it does have a very strong scent to it. So starting to get the shadows in this guy. I'm not going to go super detailed on him. I think you could, especially if you have the smaller nibs with these markers, I think you could go really, really detailed and get really good realism with these. And then just keep darkening up that shadow. Mixing a bit of a brick red color there. Yeah, didn't like how that looked. Need to blend that out. And depending on how long you let something set, you're going to get different results in how you'll blend it. Like certain things, if it sets a little bit longer, like if I if that red underneath had dried for just a bit longer and then I put the white on top, the white would have stood out more than it did here. Right now, because that red was still so wet, it just blended right in with it so I got a softer look. So you can control a lot based on how long you let a certain, any given area dry. He has a banana in his mouth. Just getting that orange tint in there. I was really impressed with how many colors I could mix with just the red, blue, and yellow. I mean, obviously red, blue, and yellow, you can pretty much mix anything from that. But besides the fact that I couldn't really get purples with the opacity of it, other than that, I mean, I really could get anything I wanted, which was nice. Wasn't totally expecting that at all. And I have to wonder, going into this, if part of why I had so much fun with it, when I went into this, I had a very negative attitude. I thought, there's no way I'm going to like this. This is not going to be fun. I'm not going to be able to do anything good. And especially the cubism. I was just like, oh, I don't want to do that. But I didn't... I just didn't think I was going to have that much fun. So when I started having fun, it's kind of like when you think a movie is going to be terrible and then you end up loving it and you think it's like, okay, do I love it because it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be? Or do I love it because I this was just so genuinely fun? But it's it was one of those things that I really was not expecting to even remotely enjoy. But it ended up being, I would say, one of my top five favorite smart art boxes. This was so much fun. I mean, fun enough that I kept drawing. I went and got found more canvas boards so I could keep using them. I had an absolute blast. Much more so than normal, which is hilarious considering how much I thought I was going to hate it. I just had to get out of my own way and give it a fair try. So I thinned out some of the white paint. I want to just give it a bit of texture, like, I don't know, bit a little bit of depth. I love the look when you splatter a bit of paint. I didn't want big splatters. I just wanted this soft, soft look. And so I splattered some white on there. And I really liked how that looked. Although here it just kind of looks like it's the glare. There you go. You can see where the glare is, how shiny that is. And this one's really shiny because I did, while I used a lot of paint thinner, I also used a lot, a lot of marker. The markers on there are really thick. So this one is probably more glossy than the other two. So there are the finished projects. And the thing with this one, like I said, I just wasn't expecting to like it. And so that I think made it even more fun to me. But I felt like I wasn't just getting art supplies in a box. I got an entire experience. I had an entire night. I did all of these in one night. I had a night that I enjoyed myself so much. And that alone is pretty priceless. I mean, I work in a lot of mediums and I have a lot of mediums. Obviously, I like art. I'm going to enjoy most things. But this being different and new and experimenting with that, I just had an absolute blast. It was so, so much fun. Have you subscribed yet? I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all my new art videos every single week if YouTube decides to notify you. You may also want to click on the bell icon just in case. And if that doesn't work, because, you know, it's YouTube, they keep changing their mind on what notifications they're sending out. You can also sign up for my free email newsletter. I send out that newsletter once a week, letting you know whatever new videos went out that week and what live stream is happening that day.